Chris, what is our fourth main topic today? This one comes from Adam Meyer. It appears the review embargo for Marvel's Werewolf by Night special has lifted and is receiving widespread acclaim for Gale's and Laurel, uh, Laura's performances, Man-Thing, the score, and for Michael Giacchino's direction. After hearing that not only... After hearing that, not only is it a refreshing take, but that is also signal... It also signals a turn to true horror and gruesome aspects within the MCU. Do you all think this could help Marvel fully embrace its supernatural side? What are your thoughts on these reviews? All right, thanks a lot for saying that in. And yeah, so a bunch of people have been able to see Werewolf by Night. Now, I, I'm going to be honest with you. You guys have heard me talk about this. I've had very little interest in this. I haven't hated the idea of it. I've just had no interest. And when they dropped the first trailer for it, I admit, and you know, I talked about it. I'm one of the few people that I watch. I'm like, that trailer didn't really interest me that much. I, I didn't really see anything there to be excited about. Kind of looked like a joke, whatever. And then, and when they posted the, the hold page for it on Disney Plus for Where Upon By Night, it listed the genre as comedy. And, and we talked about that at length as well. So it's like, I've had very, very little interest in this, just to be frank. That said, the people watching it, even people who I know have not liked Marvel's M or Disney Plus stuff, like hardly at all, are coming out and saying that this thing's great, that it's horrifying, words like chilling and truly embracing horror while also being tongue-in-cheek at the same time. Uh, James Riscardi, who's, who's known for not really liking the Marvel Disney Plus thing, he said this, he said, the Marvel Disney Plus shows have been a bit all over the map quality-wise, but Werewolf by Night is easily the best thing they've done. And that coming from somebody who has not really enjoyed what they've done so much with that. Uh, Eric Goldman writes, I love Werewolf by Night. The throwback black and white classic horror approach works perfectly for the story and feels so unique within the MCU. It's an exciting example of how they can push boundaries. That's neat to hear. An exciting example of how they can push boundaries. The, the cast is great. I hope to see more of it. Uh, Hems writes, I got the opportunity to watch Werewolf by Night a bit early and this honestly may be my favorite Phase 4 MCU project yet. So not just favorite Disney Plus thing, but my favorite Phase 4 project yet. It's brutal. It's chilling. It's effectively ch tongue-in-cheek. Also, more and more go on to say that it's very violent and all this kind of stuff at the same time. So now here's the other interesting thing about it, too. A lot of people are referring and talk about it as is a very self-contained story. So that tells me it's not bringing in a lot of loose threads or tying into the rest of the MCU all that much. I mean, I don't know if that's the case. That's what I'm interpreting from them saying it's a very self-contained story. A lot of them are saying that. I'm going to admit, I am more intrigued now hearing all these people saying, oh, no, no, it is very violent. It's chilling. It's pushing boundaries. Uh, it's still tongue-in-cheek because it's Marvel, but it's done all this kind of stuff and, and that is self-contained. And I get excited about the self-contained idea because one of the things I've been saying for a long time that I wish Marvel would do is what DC has done, telling some self-contained outside of their main cinematic universe movies with Joker, the Batman, things like that. I would love to see Marvel experiment with that. And is Werewolf by Night a little bit of an experiment with that? And if that, I got to say that's intriguing to me. So while I have not been super interested in this project, I got to say I'm liking what I'm hearing. Rob, you've been hearing the reactions coming out of this. Some people saying it's the best thing they've done in Phase 4 so far, that it's violent. It's all. What's your interpretation of this? Well, this excites me to no end because I've been really interested in how they are going to incorporate the supernatural into the MCU. Right. You know, we have like Agatha Harkness, man thing Look there. Look at that. That looks great. Um, it sounds really incredible. You know, one of the sites I was watch on YouTube is Everything Always because they always report on Marvel information. And uh, that guy was very, very enthusiastic about this. And and I'm like, wow, that's, I mean, he was waxing rhapsodic because he saw it as well. And I'm like, okay. And it sounds terrific to me. And like, it's hardcore because I'm like, how are they going to make a Blade movie in the MCU? How, where are vampires going to come from? Like the X-Men, where have they been? There's lots of monsters in the Marvel universe. Where have, is Man-Thing just wandering around somewhere and we just haven't seen him yet? So they're addressing these issues. The only criticism that I've heard of this that I found interesting was somebody said that like Man-Thing was CG mm. and that the, C, the CG creation looked a little out of place because they really leaned in to the movies of the 30s and 40s and that there was no CG. So the fact right. that, so okay, that there, that's we, you know, and I was like, I okay, that fascinated me because that wasn't a criticism as much as it was an observation. 
But everybody else has been wildly enthusiastic about this. And I'm like, man, dude, I can't wait. Cause I like you, I'm like, what is this? Like, what is this? But hearing that this is this good, dude, I'm in. I can't wait to see this. Chris, you've been hearing the reaction. Now, I know, unlike me, you have been very enthusiastic I about the sounds been. of this. What do you think about what we're hearing? What's your main takeaway? I mean, I was hoping this was going to be really campy and ridiculous, but I'm hyped for it still. I'm just going to be a little nervous watching it because I get spooked easily. But I mean, I never thought that we would get friggin' Theodore Salas in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's wild to me. There's bananas that we have man thing in this. And I think that's really a cool observation because the practical effects are what I was most excited about in well, this. Y- yeah. And I'm so, like, why did they make a practical yeah. man thing? That would have been expensive. Yeah. That would have been dope. Just you hit up the Jim Henson workshop, guys. That yeah. would have been dope. It would have been so fun. But I think this is really, really exciting. I really, really like that they are exploring other genres because we've talked about this with Star Wars. You don't have to play in the same kind of genre you can play in that same sandbox and you can explore different things there we're seeing that with andor right doing a spy espionage thriller i'm hoping we do more of this with marvel we've had you know some kind of rom com light things we've had a lot of comedies in there and stuff like that but i love that they're committing to horror i think that's going to be really cool all right guys question is for you what do you think the reactions coming out of this are not just that it's that they're good. I don't think that's the story. I don't think that the story is that the reactions about Werewolf by Night is that it's good. I'm surprised hearing that a lot of people are saying it actually is horror. That's leaning right. into that, especially with all the stuff. Like, the, I, I was not impressed with the trailer, the fact that they labeled it as comedy. So I think there's a lot of surprising things here. What surprised you? Are What's your big takeaway from the reactions we've heard coming out of Werewolf by Night? Are you looking forward to this thing? It's not that far away now, just a couple of weeks away. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comments section below and leave your thoughts there. We want to take a second and thank a sponsor of this video, Stamps.com. Guys, I know it feels early, but Christmas really is right around the corner. And if you've got a lot of stuff to send to family this year, you got to start thinking ahead. And if you're a small business owner, you know how important it is to be ready for the insane holiday season. Stamps.com has everything you need to make your life a whole lot easier. It's the 24-7 post office that you can access from anywhere. No lines, no traffic, no hassle. Get access to the USPS and UPS services that you need to run your business right from your computer. Protect your margins with major discounts from USPS and UPS rates up to 86% off. All you need is a computer and a printer. We all know that rates are always changing, but with Stamps.com's switch and save feature, you can easily compare carriers and rates so you know that you're getting the best deal every single time. And if you're running an online store, Stamps.com works seamlessly with all the major shopping carts and marketplaces. So get ahead of the holiday season chaos this year. Get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up with the promo code CAMPIA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts required. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code CAMPIA.